What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Kalani from Star Wars Shatterpoint. I've got the colors I've used up on the screen now, so if you want to give the video a pause and copy those down, we can dive right on into the tutorial. Note that you can also use this color recipe to paint Kraken from the Appetite for Destruction squad pack that includes Grievous as well. So I'm going to start by airbrushing a base coat onto the model. This will be a mix of Tenebris Grey and Gunship Green, leaning a little bit more on the Tenebris Grey side. And the goal here is just to add some color and a base coat to the model that isn't pure black. From there, I'm going to go in with Gunship Green and I'm just going to map out the armor. I'm not really familiar with Kalani, so I'm just sort of basing it off of the studio box art. And so just to help visualize all the different components, I chose to base coat the largest surface area of the model. Once I've got the armor done, I'll dive into painting the non-metal metal silver. And for this, the colors I'm using are ash gray, dark sea gray, medium sea gray, warm gray, pale sand. And basically it's a five-step color progression. I'm going to show this to you in a bit of a uh, sped up sort of clip. And you can see that I'm sort of blending it across the chest plate. So that'll be the focus of what we're working on for this component. And really it's just a progression through the five colors, whether you're wet blending or layering. I think it's more just about treating similar elements as one whole. So you can see that I'm sort of blending all four of these individual plates as one sort of larger area, just because of the way that they're angled to face the light. So as I'm highlighting, I'm going brighter and brighter, focusing the highlights on the top half of the armor plate. Once I hit the midpoint, I start to add some edge highlights all the way around for a bit of definition. And then I'm making sure to show more and more of that mid and dark tone gray as I continue to highlight up. By the time I hit that sort of warm gray pale sands mix, I'm focusing on the top third to a top quarter of the piece. And then of course, I'll do a final edge highlight with the pale sand over the edges. And I'll also add some specular dots on the bottom corners for a little bit more pop. From there, I also want to tackle the black armor. So I'll start with a base coat wash of Rattling Grime. And this is just to add a bit more depth to all of the different overlaid elements. And Rattling Grime has a bit of a dirty brown tone, which I think gives the black color a little bit more color variation in those shadows. From there, it's just a two-tone highlight, starting with Ash Gray and then Dark Sea Gray. So with the Ash Gray, I'm looking to basically base coat the armor again leaving that rattling grime in all of the deepest recesses and cracks. And then from there, I'll do a simple glaze highlight with that dark sea gray. So whether you're blending, like what blending the colors or layering or glazing, whatever technique is comfortable for you, we're just looking to create a nice soft transition between the two colors. And then from there, I can tackle the armor going from gunship green to green sky. So you can see here that I'm doing a sort of wet blending slash glazing technique. And I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm not focusing on blending the colors together. I'm definitely focusing on more of a textural transition, but because the colors are thin and I am sort of glazing it out, as I build up those layers, it does still appear relatively smooth to the eye. You can see on the blended armor plate to the right, sort of where we're aiming for the Technique of glazing just naturally creates these soft transitions without having to wet blend. I'll do the exact same thing with pure APC interior light. And with this color and the next highlight step as well, you want to be very careful because we're starting to lean more into a white or off-white paint. The pigments are going to get a little larger. So as you dilute, you need to make sure that you're creating a a soft transition that doesn't have paint chunks or paint flakes in it. I find that um, with these off-white colors, the more dilute you get, the more separation you get because you're introducing water into that pigment and medium mix. Too much water and you end up separating the pigment from the medium. And that's how you sort of end up with that chalkiness and those paint flakes. So you really have to take care to not over dilute, and to make sure that you're, you're pulling those color, colors out smoothly without those flakes. I'll take a mix of 
gunship green and this prussian blue and i'm gonna glaze into the shadow tones i wanted to introduce a bit more of a cooler shadow into the figure and so i, I thought that just having that 50 50 mix to very subtly create that coolness in the depth helped to add a bit more visual interest to the armor For the non-metal model gold, much like with the silver, it's just a color transition from burnt umber, English uniform, Japanese uniform World War II, pale yellow, and pastel yellow. The transitions on the gold for this figure are, I think, a lot more straightforward, mainly because we're, all we're doing is we're painting the filigree. So base coat with the burnt umber, and then what I did while the paint was still wet is I effectively wet blended through each of the colors in turn. And then much like with the silver, as we get brighter and brighter, we're focusing more and more on the upper parts of the model. By the time I hit the midpoint of the range, I believe it was the Japanese uniform, I'm focusing on the top half. And then by the time I hit pale yellow and pastel yellow, again, it's that top third or top quarter for that high contrast, um, bright to dark fade. From there, I'll do a nuance with Games Workshop's Juchi Violet. So I've got this loaded into the airbrush, not overly diluted. I think it's like a one-to-one -one water to paint. And I'm just focusing on airbrushing this into the mid and shadow tones. I'm not going overly saturated with this. So I'm really just targeting those deep shadows, looking at like behind the legs and the knees and under the armpits to add just a little bit of that extra nuance into the figure. To paint the eyes, I'm using deep orange and yellow. So starting with deep orange, I'm just going to fill the socket. And you can do this before or after you paint the silver trim or rim around the eye. And then once the orange is dry, I'll do a dot of yellow in the center, leaving some of that orange showing on the outside edge to get a bit of a sort of soft OSL glow. To paint the hologram, I'm going to start with an airbrush base coat of pastel green. And then from there, I'll do a glaze of Games Workshop's Aethermatic Blue. Targeting the mid and shadow tones, I'm looking to try and get a, a bit of a transition in, although I realize that with the contrast paints, they don't really blend very well. So I do go back in with some aquatic turquoise. It's a little bit more opaque, so I can control the glaze more effectively, and this will also give me an opaque deep shadow in those crevices and recesses. From there, I'll go back in with pastel green. I'll apply a solid highlight on the top and then I'll fade that highlight into the shadow tones just to get a bit more of a smoother transition. I'll do the same thing with greenish white, solid highlight on top, fading it down to the bottom. And much like with the armor, you want to make sure that as you delete this color, that you're not letting the pigments and the chalkiness of the pigments show through. So it's about finding that right balance between how much you dilute and the technique with which you actually glaze or feather the color out. And then finally, I'll go back in with pure white and I'll apply that final highlight on, in particular, the edges and corners where the hologram is sharpest. To do the OSL on the armor, I'll do a mix of pastel green and athermatic blue, and I'll start to glaze and nuance the areas where I want that blue glow to show most strongly on the arm and on the chest. Now, depending on how strong you want the hologram to actually glow, you may have to exaggerate this on other parts of the model. I went for a much more softer hologram glow, similar to the films, not the cartoons. And so I'm very subdued with how I'm throwing or projecting the source lighting. With Prussian blue, I'll go in with some watercolor glazes and target the mid and shadow tones. Um, anywhere that's gonna get some of that deeper shadowing, I use it to add a bit more richness and a bit more vibrancy to the blue. And I think I do go back in as well and I do a much softer glaze onto some of the armor panels as well, just to help carry that blue over. I found that the pastel green athematic blue was a little bit too soft, um, in particular on the arms and on the chest plate. And so do I, I do go back in and I just, as you can see here, very very softly add a bit more of that punch and nuance and it really increases the saturation of that blue once that's dry i'll go back in with pastel green 
and I'll just reinforce some of the highlights, in particular on the arm and the hand. Again, this is a source light, so you want to make sure that your values here are never brighter than the actual hologram itself. So I don't go past this um, and I avoid using white because the hologram purely should be white. Once that's done, you can glue the hologram onto the figure, glue the figure to the base, and then base the figure in the scheme or recipe of your choice. I do have a video tutorial on YouTube, I'll link in the description below, that shows how I do the basis for my entire Shadow Point collection. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you give the video a like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. I'll also have links to my other social media platforms in the video description below. And as always, until next time, happy hobbying.